Welcome to the video for chapter 36 of the Cambridge Introduction to Sanskrit, which is going to tell you about the locative and genitive absolute and about the pronoun ena. The locative absolute is a construction that's perhaps a little unusual. It consists of a noun or pronoun and a participle, and both of these stand in the locative case. They are best translated into English as a temporal clause introduced by when or while or after. And in that temporal clause, the noun or pronoun functions as the subject and the participle functions as the main verb. So, for example, tasmin gate narach upawishan. Narach upawishan simply is the men sat down. And they sat down tasmin gate. Tasmin is the locative masculine locative masculine singular of sach, meaning he, and gate is the locative masculine singular of gata, the tapatisciple of gum, to go. Gata means having gone. And so tasmin gate basically is he having gone in the locative. This is difficult to translate literally and still make sense of it, so we can either say at him having gone, the men sat down, or we can translate this into a proper temporal clause, when he had gone, the men sat down. Another example, Udyati surye vanam pravishati. Vanam pravishati, he enters the forest, and he does that, Udyati surye. Udyati is the locative masculine singular of Udyat, which is the present active participle of ud which is to, literally to go up, and in that sense to rise. So udyati is the locative singular of rising, and surye is the locative of surya, meaning sun. So udyati surye literally is at the rising sun. Or in better English, we would say when the sun rises, or perhaps also at sunrise. So, udyati surye vanam pravishati, when the sun rises or at sunrise, he enters the forest. So, locative absolute, a noun or pronoun and a participle, both standing in the locative case, to be translated into English as a temporal clause. In addition to this locative absolute, Sanskrit also has a genitive absolute. The locative absolute is much more frequent than the genitive absolute, but still, let's look at both. As far as its form con is concerned, the genitive absolute consists of a noun or pronoun and a participle, both standing in, yes, you may have guessed it, the genitive case. As far as its translation is concerned, while the locative absolute usually is best translated as a temporal clause, the genitive absolute can be purely temporal, may have to be translated as a temporal clause, or it may also have concessive meaning, and uh, concessive means a clause that's introduced with although. So to look at an example, sam udram apibat sarva lokasya pashyatah. Samudram apibat means he drank or drank up the samudram, the ocean, sarva lokasya pashyatah. Sarva Lokasya is the genitive of Sarva Loka, meaning the entire world or the whole world. Pashyatach is the genitive singular masculine, agreeing with Sarva Lokasya, of Pashyat, which is the present active participle of Drish Pashyati, meaning to see. So this is whole world genitive looking on genitive. And this can be translated as he uh, drained or drank up the ocean with the whole world looking on, so keeping the participle in the English translation, or as a temporal clause, while the whole world was looking on, or as a concessive clause, although the whole world was looking on. And finally, completely unrelated to absolute constructions, here is a brief look at the pronoun ena meaning this. This is a completely straightforward pronoun. It's demonstrative. It's used mostly when there is no strong emphasis on what the pronoun refers to. It is defective, meaning that not all of its case forms are attested, so it's got an incomplete paradigm. 
but the forms that are attested are completely straightforward. So basically what you have is the stem ena that doesn't change throughout the, pro, uh, throughout the paradigm. And then you have the endings that we also find of sach tad. So we have in the, for example, in the accusative singular, the masculine form enam, in the neuter enat, and in the feminine enam. So this is completely parallel to tam, tat, and tam. In the instrumental singular, we have enena, this is completely parallel to tena, and we have enaya, which is completely parallel to taya. So straightforward, just remember this as a new vocab item, ena, new pronoun meaning this. That was it for this chapter. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you have any comments or suggestions, we would love to hear from you. Please do write to us at ruppel at cambridge-sanskrit.org. And now, for your own work on this material, good luck and have fun.